This is the O Review Podcast. O Review. Hello, welcome to another episode. Um, we've just passed about four years of me doing these videos, so uh, that was around like December 2010, and now it's January 2015, so we're rolling along. Um, if you remember the early videos, I was sort of going along this list where I started off with the first pair I bought and I just slowly moved on to more and more pairs as I got to them. Um, as of recently, I've had the opportunity to take a look at some of the newer stuff, which is good for people who actually want to base that on something they can buy now. But meanwhile, I want to sort of get back to the roots where I take a look at some of the past models that I have and uh, delve into a little more of the history. So we actually got through this first page. Um, some of them I've sold and things like that, so not every line has been hit. There's also a couple duplicates where I took a look at an entire model, which is kind of what I'm going to do here. So moving to the second page, I have the Fat Cat in blue camo, which is one I wanted for a long time. Um, instead of going over one colorway, um, especially when I have so many of these, I'm going to cover the entire model and maybe talk about some of the you know, better colorways, but um, I think that will make things move a lot faster. Um, I was worried about running out of things to do, but since I'm only on page two and it's been four years, I probably won't run out of things <laughs> at any point. Uh, there's always something new to talk about, and delving back to the old ones can sort of be like a, a safety net for me. All right, so Fat Cat. Uh, this was sort of a offshoot of the Monster Dog, and it was part of the Stretch Line collection back when it came out in 2005. So the uh, the Fat Cat and the Warden were the two that came out at the same time. So the Stretch Line debuted with those two models. And um, the closest thing we can see to it now, um, although this is probably not around anymore either, is the Monster Pup. Um, so basically they're both just smaller versions of the Monster Dog with similar stylings and things like that as well as similar names. So while the Monster Pup has uh, the elliptical icon and the Fat Cat has the heavy stretch, uh, the Monster Pup also has the dual cam hinges that kind of snap in place, whereas the Fat Cat is just a normal swing hinge. So um, I believe it was around like 2006, 2007 where they started debuting this, and I believe the Bottle Cap was the first model that had that dual cam hinge, and ever since most of the models have been employing that, at least the ones that don't have a pin hinge, like um, the Half Jacket 2. So, of course, since I love color, the first one I tried to find was the Blue Camo Fat Cat. And trying to find these in stores was impossible. Reason being is that stores didn't want to invest in inventory that may not sell. So it was kind of a, they kind of bit themselves in the foot because this is a really cool model, but none of the stores wanted it, so it really didn't sell well. But, luckily for me, since none of the stores wanted them or none of the stores sold them, they all get sent back and they ended up in vaults for ridiculously cheap. Um, I think probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $50 or something like that. So, um, I love the blue camo pattern. Uh, you can tell that it's a blue base with some of the you know dark camo pattern on top of it. Um, it's very similar and probably has the same pattern as like the, the night camo and the snow camo and the monster dog and other similar models. Um, but the blue really kind of works here. Uh, the heavy stretch icon is sort of the, uh, the dark gun model. And they just have standard gray lenses, which of course, you know, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like iridium if possible, but the gray sort of works here. As far as fit goes, now they do have a very shallow base curve, so when you put it on you, it's almost like a sort of a flat orbital, and then it turns and it goes straight back into your head. So I would put these more in the lifestyle category. Um, maybe not so much today, uh, but back then these would probably be more of a lifestyle piece. Um, nowadays, things like Holbrooks and frog skins are clearly in the lifestyle, and um, I guess gas cans in the lifestyle too. Although compared to those inspired frames, I'd say gas can is almost in the bridge between lifestyle and active. Um, Monster pup, I would clearly put in the active at this point, just like the Monster Dog. Um, they've had a lot of changes over categories over the years. Originally, we had frog skins versus jackets, which was basically lifestyle versus sport. But over time, we had things like the 20s, which kind of bridged the two, and it got put into frog skins, but it was more like a jacket. But it was basically targeted towards a third group, which is in the middle, called active. So now we basically have uh, lifestyle, active, and sport. So it kind of um, bridges a few of those gaps. So 
So just like the rest of the stretch line ones, they do have the stretch line logo. Uh, they also came in these nice red boxes. And the boxes are adorned with the splatter stretch logo. So that's sort of a, the stretch logo just splattered around everywhere. Um, the only one that didn't come with this was the Ryan Sheckler Twitch, which is a sort of a special edition. He had his own box with his own designs and things like that. But all the rest of the stretch line came in the red box. So I've actually collected a lot of those over the years, and my whole stretch line display is just solid uh, stretch line boxes, so it makes a nice backdrop. I've uh, shown this in a few videos so far, but this is, a, I hate to say, one of my prized possessions, but it, I, I am actually sort of proud to have a, a, one of these. This is the original stretch line catalog, which is available uh, for free if you went into a stretch line uh, dealership. So it was either a ski or a surf shop were the only ones that could carry this. And this goes over all of the stretch line editions up until this point. So we have the Warden, we have the new Razor Blade, which came out slightly after. It was towards the end of 2005, whereas these were you know, closer to the beginning. Uh, the Montefrio, and the Fat Cat. Now the interesting thing here is that this model is just listed as polished black gray on the website when it finally did hit the website. Now there are also other polished black ones. There's the polished black with the black iridium polarized with the white heavy stretch logo. Uh, there's a couple matte black ones. But uh, the difference here is that it says Rasta on it. So nowhere else does it mention that it's a Rasta edition. So basically the heavy stretch logo is going to match the flag. And uh, that's really the only thing that's different with this. But uh, the only time it was mentioned that is in this catalog. Uh, we got the Riddle and the Grape Gascan. These were actually the two non-stretch ones to be included in the stretch collection. So even though they didn't have the heavy stretch logo, uh, they were the standard editions, but they were two unique colorways. Um, the purple, or the grape gas scan, which was originally going to be crystal merlot. So then there's the riddle with the violet lens. And violet hadn't been around for a while, so it was sort of exciting to see that come back. Because the last time we saw that was on the old frog skins and blades, so it's kind of cool to have that return again. So we also had some goggles too, and this came in the A-frame and the crowbar. And the A-frame typically had the heavy stretch logo, so that fit in line with the stretch line. But then there was also a few of the crowbars which had the classic logo. This is the time they started reintroducing the classic logo, which we see all the time now due to the frog skin and things like that. But this is when they started digging into their history and incorporating some of the older designs into modern releases. Uh, a few more goggles, and then there was some apparel which brought back the classic logo. So we saw a lot of those. Alright, so what colorways do we have? So aside from the blue camo, which of course is my favorite, we had a lot of the standard ones. Um, I started collecting a few of these, and then before you know it, you realize I have almost all of them. Let's try to collect all the rest of them. So we have the Rasta edition, which is just polished black with the Rasta flag logo. We have polished black with black iridium polarized. And the difference is it has the white logo here, so that way you, kind of, you can see that it's a different version compared to the normal gray one. Uh, I fought to get that one because that was actually the last one I needed. So when you've completed the whole set and the last one you have left is a black option, you kind of have a, you feel like there's always something better to buy. But I did finally end up finding that in the vault for not too much, so I did end up getting it. Uh, there was a cream, and actually the cream came with gold lenses. And then there was a matte black, which came with gray lenses, or sorry, black iridium. Uh, I figured the monochrome look would look a little bit better, so I have cream with black iridium. And then I have the matte black with gold. And then I also swapped the icons around, so it has the gold icons and then the gunmetal icons. So I think the monochrome look and then the sort of the root beerish look, like uh, a lot of the other colorways, I think that works a little bit better. There's also a whiskey, and the whiskey has bronze lens. And this is um, actually just a coating. And we started seeing things like the whiskey and the, the black fades around this time, too. The problem with these, though, is that with hot water and sweat, these can actually start flaking off. So I wouldn't wear these just for fear of that. And actually, I have a custom of that, where all of the coating came off, and now I have a completely clear frame. I grabbed the white logos from the polarized pair, and then I cut some titanium iridium lenses for the lenses here, so I have a completely clear pair. Um... I never wear this, it's just more for the novelty to see if I could do it. But it sort of looks cool on the shelf and it's another nice piece to have. Uh, like most releases, there was a tortoise. Because tortoise and matte black are one of the two most common ones. 
Uh, I believe that's it for most of the custom ones. I also have a polished black with ice, which is a custom. I have a matte black with fire. This is a real nice one with custom uh, orange logos. And I also have one I consider the SI model. There was no SI model, but this one has uh, gray non-iridium lenses, a matte black frame, and then a muted out logo. So this would actually fit the SI specs uh, due to those reasons. Uh, I'll probably end up turning this into a custom at some point, but it is sort of cool to have. So that's pretty much it for Fat Cats. Um, when stretch line went away and turned into block line, block line didn't last either, so then it just turned into the normal square O. The Fat Cat didn't go with it. So you had the Warden, the Twitch, and the Eye Patch, which did take on the Square Out logo, but the Twitch just ended up going away. So Montefrio did too. But no more Fat Cat. It sort of lives on spiritually in the Monster Pup, which I don't care for as much. Not that it's a bad frame, but I just love the stretch line look and all that. So Plus, it kind of reminds me of the first couple of years when I was collecting too, so the nostalgia factor kicks in heavy time. So I'll probably do a full stretch line video at some point, which will cover 90% of what I already talked about, but it'll be in a more professional format. So as always, have a good day. Thanks.